Welcome to the Community Immunity Series. I really hope you enjoy this selection of hand-picked people that I've chosen to interview to share with you their knowledge and their insights about how you can navigate through this times with physical resilience, with emotional calm, Make sure that you're subscribed so you get notifications of when each interview is being released. Take advantage of it while it's up for the 24 hours. And just know, of course, that if you want access to the whole, all of the recordings forever, then you can purchase the package as well. So without further ado, let's dive in and enjoy. Okay, well, welcome. Thanks for uh, being on the call with us here today, Robert. Uh, <laughs> interesting times we live in. Yeah, may you live in interesting times. I think somebody said that one time. <laughs> That's right. Well, we got our wish. We're, we're living it. And uh, what's, what's, what's been your experience the past uh, few days? We're, it's still early days yet, you know, and uh, let's kind of use that as a, as a launching point. Uh, I know we're going to cover a lot of ground here. And just, yeah, well, I was uh, giving a, a two-day course in Victoria about a week or so ago um, on, uh, on the brain, you know, rejuvenate your brain naturally. And uh, it was already kerfuffle and uh, lucky I got on a plane and uh, I'm back home and uh, feeling good. Both my wife and I are self-isolating as much as possible, although I make an occasional grocery store trip, but that's about it. I mean, that's what we've been doing and, you know, just kind of, you know, relaxed. I, I do notice everything calmer out there in the sense of people giving more space, there's less traffic, lots of good things happening. Yeah, and no, I, I, I'd agree, you know, uh, I mean, I'm, I get two different realities, like when I go for a walk, when I get up, when I've gotten up to the mountains, you know, most people in that environment are looking very kind of positive and, and happy and relaxed. And then the store, you can be a little bit different. We, we get the whole range all the way from, yeah. you know, some guy, doomsday conspiracy theories to people totally uh, bewildered and just not really sure what to what to make of it. I think there's a lot of anxiety. I mean, yourself is a you know, you have a rent on a store and things like that and employees and, and for ourselves, we just have a little home business. So really isn't affecting us that much. But for some people, it's really a, a very difficult time of anxiety and stress over economics, things of that nature. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to restrict where our conversation goes, but I, oh. I know you, you've got a lot uh, to share from kind of the, the, the physical well-being. And, and absolutely, I'm sure there's a lot to share kind of your perspective on, on the emotional well-being. Uh, but what, what do you feel is most important for, for people right now, you know, to think about, to be aware of, to make changes toward? Well, let's start with the diet. I think that's a good place to start. I, I do believe that... Uh, those who already pay attention to what they eat for various reasons, uh, eating uh, as uh, clean and, uh, and uh, as conscious as you can, of course, is very useful. Um, some people are quite zinc deficient and they should check that out. And a zinc supplement or zinc copper supplement or, or just a zinc lozenge is a great idea, I think. Uh, in the times and and of course your vitamin D can't go wrong with vitamin D I mean that's kind of a daily supplement at, at our house anyways and uh, you know uh, with the with the way we live in the northern climate it should be you know really considered for a lot of people yeah and it, yeah it's, it's, the other thing I would say I, oh sorry the other thing I was going to just say is that um, you know uh, that a lot of people are concerned about the fact that there's so, a so-called low-grade fever associated with this virus, and that is true, but I, I want to remind everyone that your regular temperature is 36.5 Celsius and not 37, so don't, you know, take that into account, but also the fact that it changes through the day from early morning when we wake up to middle of the day, so if people are concerned about health just based on their temperature, I would not, you know, read too much into that. Yeah. Yeah. And also the other side is, um, I think it's really important if people are experiencing a bit of a fever state to avoid suppressing their fevers with some of the over-the-counter medications that can drive the acute symptoms into a deeper chronic problem. And so, especially with this particular virus, which tends to 
move down into the lungs into chronic conditions like pneumonia, really important not suppress, like stay away from your Tylenol and your, you know, all and the ibuprofen and all of these kind of things simply because of that fact. Right. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I got a question because um, someone, you know, had heard that advice, you know, like don't take, you know, these, these anti-inflammatories like Advil and so on and so forth. And, and then their question was, well, what about reishi mushroom and turmeric, which are also anti-inflammatory? You know, should I be avoiding them on the, the same, you know, grounds? Well, I think turmeric's great stuff. I mean, add it to your meals, eat it on a regular basis. I mean, if you supplement with it, if for in inflammation, continue to do so. Uh, reishi, of course, is not only a great medicinal mushroom, but it's also an adaptogenic uh, medicinal mushroom. So not only does it reduce inflammation in your body, but it also mod modulates your immune system either direction. So people with autoimmune conditions can safely use something like reishi or uh, even shiitake. I love shiitake mushrooms. Uh, they are probably some of our most important um, antivirals. So I really like shiitake. Uh, yeah, and the great, great thing about the shiitake and the maitake and you know, a lot of the mushrooms, they, they taste delicious too. So it's like that, 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 look, that old saying, like literally eating your, your medicine as food, right? Well, I agree. Uh, one little proviso I think about cordyceps, uh, which is you know, a real favorite of mine as well, is that uh, cordyceps is contraindicated during fevers. So, so people should be cautious about when they use cordyceps in their regime. Yeah, so that, that brings up another question I had for you. I've, I've heard varying, um, differing opinions. Uh, some herbalists say, uh, do not take reishi while you are sick. Uh, and others say, you know, just, just keep going. It's going to help while you're sick. And, and by sick, I mean kind of the average common cold or flu or you know, viral infection. Well, I think uh, Reishi has a proven track record with some clinical studies uh, for asthma and chronic bronchitis. And I don't know about an actual study for pneumonia, but it is a lung tonic. And yeah. so, uh, so Reishi is one of my right up there favorites. Uh, you know, it's uh, and a fruiting body, not necessarily the mycelium. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Okay, and which brings me back to that point. So you were talking about okay, zinc, you know, vitamin D. Uh, many of us know the whole trick with uh, increasing vitamin D in the mushrooms. Uh, but for those that don't, you want to uh, share that? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great, great tip. I mean, even your about mushrooms, your shiitake, uh, your oysters, when you get them home, just turn them gill up and uh, start to and expose them to UV, particularly sunlight. 30 minutes can make a big difference in terms of doubling and tripling your vitamin D content of your mushrooms as well. And if for those especially who don't want to take a uh, synth synthetic D3, uh, you know, derived from sheep's lanolin. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I saw one recently. It was a vitamin D from uh, lichen they're starting to do. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they also produce D. Yeah. 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 And I, I assume this trick with the, with the mushrooms is, is any mushroom, right? Because there are actually a lot of growers now in North America that are beginning to produce reishi, lion's mane, uh, oyster. You can get all these ones fresh now. And uh, so year round, uh, you know, I assume it has to be a fresh mushroom to the light. Yes. The dried. Yeah. Cool. So that's a simple, easy way. So moving on kind of with, with diet. So we've got zinc, we've got vitamin D. Yeah, your mushrooms, all of those, right? Um, yeah. I would say number one rule of whatever your choice of vegetarian, uh, vegan, uh, omnivore, that you really stay away from all the simple sugars. Right. That is, sugar will depress your immune system for up to 24 hours. So try and stay away from that. It's just not, you know, you want to keep your immune system optimal and you don't need that now. Sweeteners, one of my favorite right now is, is honey. Uh, not yeah. just necessarily Manuka honey, but any honey. It's, it's very powerful, antibacterial, antiviral. And honey is a great sweetener in moderation. Like if you like a little bit in your tea, for example. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Got some in my tea right now. Oh, absolutely. It's they funny, actually. 
I was uh, someone who was telling me a story of how they were, uh, they were, you know, kind of one of these, you know, panic trips back, you know, like last minute, you know, one of the last flights out of whatever country they were in back home to Canada. And, you know, of course, a lot of hysteria, you know, in those environments, people with delays, not sure if they're going to make it back and, you know, uh, lineups and you name it. And people are in such a state. And, and you know what the airlines were doing is, is a way to kind of like, I don't know, soothe people or whatever their thinking was. They were handing out candy. Yeah, right. That was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, I would be frightened to be on a plane right now, I tell you. I mean, I, I felt very fortunate to get back when I did. Yeah. I, just had, uh, I have a new book coming out in uh, May, end of April here, on uh, medicinal mushrooms of the Western North America. And my co-author is uh, Dwayne Sept, S-E-P-T. And uh, he just got home to Sunshine Coast from Borneo. He just oh, wow. went through Malaysia. He said it was kind of crazy and uh -huh. very fortunate. Feels very lucky to be self-isolating in the Sunshine Coast for two weeks. So <laughs> yeah, I just spoke to him today. So lucky. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's, that's part of the perspective we all need to have. You know, there was those of us that are in, you know, North America, like, you know, we, yes, we're going through very tough, challenging times, but hey, we've still got electricity. We've still got central heat, you know, like the comfort of our own homes with a, a nice supply of food. And exactly. So, yeah. I do feel sorry for uh, some of the, uh, the unfortunate street people right now it's going to be a double tough thing like sleeping in shelters beside other people and things like that must feel you know even more awkward than usual so and not getting the nutrition they need either yeah 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 no for sure yeah so keep yourself i think hot foods tend to be good uh, they say hot drinks better than cold for uh, keeping the throat and all of that kind of uh, healthy the nose yeah, yeah. So I think that's all good stuff. Yeah, cool. What, so what other precautions are, are you taking with your immune system and, and maybe su would suggest uh, others to, to take? Well, um, without being an expert on this particular virus, I, I pulled up my favorites. I mean, I'm taking, uh, prophylactically, I'm taking Lomation. Right. You're familiar with that herb, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of my go-tos uh, for any kind of influenza, threatening, cold flu, feeling like, you know, where, where many people might go to echinacea, and for some people that, that can be a, a great go-to. Uh, I like Lomatium, it's much, I think, more antiviral, and right. so <clears throat> a little, little gargle with it and then that's down the throat, and uh, it just feels good, and uh, it might be in my imagination, but uh, it's uh, something that's on my go-to list anyways. I mean, it really, you know, apparently, you know, as this virus does move from the throat, in the nose, throat into the lungs, I'm getting mixed messages about whether it's a moist environment or dry. Is it drying out the lungs? Is it moistening, making more too much moisture? And so when you're picking herbs, you have to look at the big picture in terms of a little bit of self-diagnosis, I guess. Is this a wet cough? Is this a dry cough? And then choose the herbs that are appropriate for that. Right. It appears that uh, warming seems to be uh, a given, but who knows, right? Yeah, yeah, no, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So I mean, obviously, you know, as people become concerned, I mean, there's, there's kind of, a, it's a double-edged sword. There's, there's some positives and, and some concerns or negatives around this, you know, what I've seen, and I'm sure you have as well. There's, there's definitely not a huge surge, but you know, for those already in the know and maybe some on the periphery are going, you know, herbs, herbs are a good idea right at this time. And they're starting to move towards that. That's absolutely a positive for, you know, herbalism in general. Uh, what are the, some of the concerns that you're seeing or that you have as, as there is this move towards uh, plant medicine and people, you know, using and self-diagnosing? That's a great, idea. well, that's, yeah, self-diagnosis, uh, yeah, you, you have to be ex extremely careful, but I would say some general rules. I think garlic's great. Yeah. Green tea apparently has some benefits to offer. And, uh, and also things like olive leaf. And if you haven't got access to olive leaf, uh, uh, my favorite uh, quote substitute, which is a member of the olive family is uh, lilac, which is coming out very soon. Right. The leaf of it has some very, 
distinct uh, benefits for uh, antiviral activity. Oh, wow. Yeah, one thing I will say, though, I am a little concerned that um, I see here and there people recommending astragalus. And uh, uh, although, you know, it could be considered, some people considered an adaptogen, I think it's on the borderline of that. But, but certainly, um, it works in a very opposite way to a, a nerve like echinacea, which is up and out and opens the pores and whatever. Astragalus tends to put things in and down and prevents the pores from opening, which may or may not be a useful thing for people at a particular stage. Right. And uh, you'll often notice when you go into some uh, stores, they'll sell immune teas or tinctures that contain both echinacea and astragalus. How dumb is that? I mean, you know, from an herbalist perspective. Yeah. It's kind of a shotgun approach. And so I would just caution people to, to pay attention to that. Yeah, no, for sure. And so as, as you described it, I'm interpreting, you know, astragalus is probably good, you know, in that, you know, pre-preventative measure, right? You oh, know, definitely. So, yeah, fortify the system. But, you know, in the case of this virus, a lot of people carry it, have no idea, or it's taking, you know, several days or a week or longer to right. for symptoms to kind of arise. And if you're kind of forcing it and bobbing it down, I, I can see where the, the concern is there. Yeah, I think people could, should do a little research. The, the, uh, the immune system tends to go in either a TH1 or TH2 direction. And I don't want to get, you know, too fancy here, but, but basically during pregnancy, uh, basically women will switch to a TH2 so they don't uh, um, abort a uh, organism in their body that they want to retain. Uh, and so uh, astragalus has this uh, 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 effect on the TH1, TH2 balance in your body. And so does vitamin A, which is really an important vitamin as well, and zinc. And those emphasize either one or the other direction. And so people should do a little homework before they just take nilly willy something off that's recommended and, and perhaps talk to their local naturopath or, or herbalist, someone who has some experience with these kind of immune um, compromised type of conditions. You know? uh, so having said that, Eusne is right on my table here too. Right. I, like, I like the lichen. Uh, and uh, eusnea, not just for sore throats, but it does tend to have a great effect on a number of, you know, mycobacterium, bacteria in general, strep and staph. And a lot of people now who are experiencing uh, maybe a little bit of sore throat and are not COVID-19, maybe they have a strep throat. And right. eusnea can be very, very useful. It's kind of hard to get in and get a testing for that at the moment. Uh, so something to keep in mind and certainly wouldn't hurt, hurt you anyways, you know. Yeah, and, and isn't, isn't he, I've heard that that's one that's best prepared as a tincture in an alcohol extract? That's my favorite. I, I believe that, you know, some people say there's a few polysaccharides in it, but it's pretty much a pretty dry uh, uh, lichen and uh, a 95, 96% uh, um, alcohol will give you all the extraction of all of the eusnic acid, which is really what you're after. Yeah, very, very poorly soluble in water. Right, yeah. Easily in alcohol and very soluble in oil. So right. yeah, that's why it's very effective for ringworm, athlete's foot, tinea, all those kind of external applications as well. But yeah, but and I think that, sorry? No, go ahead. Yeah. But I was just gonna say, I think basically the herbal, um, direction that a lot of people may choose for themselves right now is if their immune system is functioning well and they're eating well and they're sleeping, um, uh, decreasing stress. Yeah. And so there are a lot of great herbs out there, depending on your body type, hot, cold, wet, dry, uh, for herbs that are very useful for decreasing uh, anxiety and stress calming the nervous system, which is always very important and should be probably part of most herbal formulas. There should be a nervine of choice in there. And that could vary from, you know, uh, valerian to skullcap to, to hops to chamomile to 
whatever your favorite, the one that really works well for you, right? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Cool. So what about, um, and I'm sure you've been a part of a lot of the conversations, uh, I thought no better person to address this kind of elderberry controversy and, and the Sutter King storm. Is, is that something you've been following the threads of and, and would like to weigh in on one way or another? Yeah, I, I really like the, uh, who was that posted? It was really good. Something about, so everybody who's ever made an herbal tea is all, all of a sudden an expert on cytokine storm. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, and really, come on. I mean, uh, the uh, the body, when it reacts to an unknown organism, it will always create an inflammatory response as it ramps up to find a way to deal with this pathogen. And, uh, you know, in the case of, for example, a very virulent one like Ebola, many people die from that simply because by the time their temperature is so elevated that by the time they actually, their body starts to rally uh, the white blood cell count, the T cells, the B cells, they die. Right. But this is not the case with this virus. This virus doesn't really induce much of a fever. And if it does have a little bit of one, just don't suppress it. Right. Um, elderberry is great. Um, uh, I know Buner is a real fan of, uh, uh, elderberry leaf and and stem and uh, I, I I trust his judgment but I actually never had the opportunity to use it in a clinical setting so I I couldn't comment intelligently about that but yeah. uh, but if you but if you like your elderberry uh, carry on you know yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's good. And, and what I what I appreciate about you, the number of times that we've you know done a plant walk, and, I, and I'll say this to people, it's like it's amazing to to go on a plant walk with Robert, because literally, I mean, any plant we could be walking along, and it's it's almost like pop quiz. Like, all right, what's that one? You've got you know common name, Latin name, uh, benefits, properties, but also you know that clinical experience to draw from. You you usually always got a story about you know so and so names aside, but you know here's here's the condition that was presenting. You know here was the herb that was suggested and, and how that course of action took and that's that's a yeah it's well a, you know 50 years later you're an expert on something or other right yeah <laughs> right yeah and then and, and hence you know again that caution of well th this is something new here's here's something here's what we don't know right yeah i it's really an unknown virus i really have been trying to to read up a bit and there is a lot of um I would say contrary information out there. And so I think everyone has to kind of do their own homework a bit. Yeah. But I also caution people that, you know, uh, it's, it appears that most of the people who, who have uh, passed on uh, already had some kind of a pre-existing health condition or, or, or a severely compromised immune system. Right. And so people who keep themselves healthy, uh, and I think laughter is one of the great ways to keep the immune system healthy. And so I do like some of the uh, humor that's going around on the Facebook. Yeah. I also like some of the uh, support systems that have come into place for helping people and assist. And uh, so we'll, we will get through this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and what's your hope, you know, coming through this? Do you, you see any kind of silver linings that you, humanity could take from this? And you'd love to well, see I, I, I certainly can speak about our country anyways, and, and maybe Canada and the U.S., although they are having a more difficult problem, I think, simply because they have a privatized healthcare system. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. total chaos. At yeah. least in this country, we have you know, dedicated uh, health practitioners and God bless them that they're showing up every day. But, mm -hmm. but the fact that we can coordinate public policy health, I think that's going to even strengthen it more and more. I think people are going to recognize at the end of this that, wow, we better protect what we have. We better not move to the American system. Yeah. The other thing I think would be people recognizing how important it is to think local. Right. And, and as a bioregional herbalist, I mean, that fits right into my mantra. I, you should use the herbs that are in your neighborhood. Yeah. And you should grow the food in your neighborhood. Like, and support the people who are producing organically um, uh, produced uh, 
foodstuffs like all of our grains and our animals and, and everything out there that we rely on, uh, kind of like the 100 mile diet. We should right. be, be putting that into effect. And I think people are starting to really come around who have never thought about it much, who, you know, really like those Kiwis from New Zealand every week, that there are options. We have options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you can grow Kiwis in uh, on the West Coast of Canada, for instance. That's what apparently you can, and olives too. That's what I heard. <laughs> but eventually I might get out there. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, so, you know, uh, do you have any suggestion, you know, in, in the world of herbs, how people can uh, navigate that? Because, there, you know, elderberry is just one example. And there's going to be other things that are going to come up where people are like, oh, you, you can take this, you can't take that. And, you know, how right. do you kind of simplify and, and, and cut through a lot of that? Yeah, uh, well, an old herb that I used to use back in the day in clinical for, uh, for cancer, uh, Pedarco, has a great proven antiviral activity. And that would make a suitable tea. I mean, I, I don't know how available it is as a tea nowadays, but uh, yeah. certainly that's a great. It. Hmm? It said we have it. It's quite, uh, quite abundant through our supply chain currently anyways. Wonderful, yeah. And, and uh, if you don't have a lot of uh, pharmaceutical drugs in your repertory, then St. John's wort is actually a very good antiviral. Right. And uh, for those who can handle it and, Maybe if you're we're getting towards the end of the seasonal effective, but uh, maybe just carry on with your St. John's work for a little longer, uh, wouldn't hurt you as well. I think also one thing that I've been doing a lot of is uh, I have a aromatic steam unit and a sauna, and I've been alternating both of those. And, and when I go into the steam, my two favorite antiviral essential oils are Ravent Sarah, our, you know, Raven, Sarah, and uh, Laurel Leaf. And both of those are very powerful uh, antivirals. And in a steam unit, or even people in their home, you can do the, the hot water, towel over the head, put a few drops of oil in the water, and put that right up through the nostrils, can be a great prophylactic. You know, um, it does... The viruses do reside for a while in the nose before they move down. And if yeah. you can zap them at an early stage, all the better. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing just as a kind of a, you know, a, a prophylactic. Yeah. 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 And so this is a little bit different uh, than diffusing. Would you recommend diffusing as well? or Sorry, which? Uh, diffusing? Like just yeah, don't diffuse. No? Yeah. Okay. No diffusing. You mean just generally into the air? Yeah, I think this is more concentrated rate right to rate right where you're at. Yeah, so, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. yeah, no, I've definitely done that before. Yeah, hot water, put the towel over the bowl, close the eyes and breathe deep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't forget chocolate. Right. Chocolate is very good for stress and for the immune system. And uh, yeah, and you make some nice chocolate product. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so you know, Put, put the mushrooms in it. Like that's what I like to say, chocolate's the, the greatest delivery system uh, for these kinds of things. Cause oh, you know, definitely. it's the Trojan horse because no matter what you put inside, it gets past anyone's pearly gates. I hear ya, that's good, I like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's lots of things people can do, but I, I really think if people you know, focus on uh, taking care of themselves and their family and uh, just dis keep, their, keep their distance, their social, distance uh, and give people that space to, to, you know, do what they need to do, that it, it'll all work out. Yeah. That's yeah. My, my thought, you know. Yeah, for sure. And, and hopefully it'll bring a greater awareness to, you know, health, health long-term for, for everyone, right? Like, I, as you mentioned, I think, and I've been seeing, you know, various percentages, you know, the, the people that are most vulnerable that are dying are the ones that had pre-existing medical conditions. Um, and yeah. most, most of those are diet and lifestyle related. So yeah. if we can shift that as a foundation, then our, our society is going to become less vulnerable vulnerable to these types of uh, outbreaks. Yeah, I also too believe that uh, there is a place because of the anxiety and angst and that uh, various vibrational therapies such as flower essences, for example, can be extremely useful in these times. You know, yeah. up under anxiety and 
and uh, you know, fear of crowds and things of that nature. There's there are essences that are extremely useful, and and uh, flower essences from the English system or FES or Prairie Diva, which my wife and I have worked with, or or mushroom essences, which is one of my favorite areas. Uh, there's a couple like birch polypore and uh, giant puffball that are extremely useful for some of the anxiety that people hold within themselves. And as they constrict and tighten and congest, uh, that's actually the opposite of what you want to do in this time. You want to, you know, let the energy flow. And uh, so it can really help with that as well. Yeah. Oh, amazing. So you've, yeah, you've written a book on mushroom essences. Have you done one on flower essences as well? I'm sure you have. Yes. Laurie and I put one out a few years ago. It's called uh, Prairie Diva Flower Essences. Okay. Yeah. It's all about ones from this part of the world, from, from Alberta. Yeah. 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 And, and how, how many, how many books are you up to again now? 55, 56? I am stalled out of 54. I, 54. Uh, yeah, I, 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 well, no, 55 is coming up, the one I mentioned with Dwayne. It's a co-author, so yeah. it's coming out uh, end of April. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cool. Medicinal mushrooms, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've been I was t telling my wife the other day, I said, here's a couple of good months that if I wanted to get into a writing gig, now's right. the time, right? Yeah, so yeah. I may, I may, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, that's it. That's another opportunity people have right now. If, if they find themselves out of work or in that isolation period, it's, it's, you know, if they're hopefully in work, that is in alignment with who they are and it lights them up to continue that work from home, but, or if not, to really begin to question that and, and hopefully find something. That, uh, yeah, I think there are probably a lot of people who are, are questioning the idea that, uh, you know, I have to go to work every day for the next 35 years to, to pay my mortgage and my new car. And, and is it a job that really fulfills me on some deep level? Is it something I, that I have sole purpose for and want to really do with my life? And so I think it is a time of questioning for people. And I think that's all good. Yeah. I think that it use, use the time for inspiration, you know, yeah. and uh, it's also a time for music. Right. How to really, music is very healing and soothing as well. And uh, in fact, uh, that really helps to bring our, our whole body and our psyche back into balance. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So, I, you know, one, one thing that's kind of the thread of through all these conversations is, is people really, and, and it's the heart of what the light seller is doing is helping people find and learn how to craft uh, their own food and medicine. And uh, you're definitely a huge influence in our world and our community. And you have a lot of resources online. Uh, you've, you know, you're, you're on with us right now. We've done some workshops together in person. Uh, but what are some of the things you have available in addition to your 54 books that are out there and available through Amazon? on uh any online learning opportunities as people go wait a minute you know this this is really important i want to learn how to take care of myself through herbs through flower essences uh what are your resources well you know that's a great question i um really have i'm kind of old school and so doing something like zoom uh is uh relatively new to me and uh probably something i should explore and will explore more uh, it's a great way to communicate with people. I, I still enjoy the classroom experience or the infield of one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on, kind of here's the herb, here's the root, this is what you do with it, right? Yeah. I do enjoy that as well. But I understand how, you know, the world is changing. And, um, and we do have a college. We have a college of Northern Star, Northern Star College in Edmonton. And, and, uh, our next classes are in May, and so we're not sure what that's going to look like at this point. Um, but we also have resources. Uh, people can go to our website uh, at selffielddistributing.com, and we have flower essences, uh, and uh, we have essential oils and mushroom essences. And it's interesting since um, uh, since this uh, slowdown and the and the shutting down of some some retail stores we found that we're mailing things every day now so so on that side it's really helped people find us and so that's been kind of good um, yeah 
So yeah. that's yeah. self self heal. What's the website again? Yeah, selfhealdistributing.com. S E L F H E A L. Self heal like the plant. Yeah. Distributing.com. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> cool. Well, we should get uh, back on a call and we'll do we'll do some other uh, you know version in in the coming weeks because who knows how long this is going to go on for that we'll all be at home and restricted to online and as soon as we can get back to bringing us all together in person we'll we'll continue to as well so yeah i i am a little concerned that uh there will be a peak of all of this and then it slides down the other side in terms of numbers of cases of activity and uh it would be i think a mistake to be too premature into to all of a sudden going back to quote the old normal uh, too right. soon i really believe people should still practice some of these things that we've learned about sanitizing our hands and and coughing into our you know our sleeve and things of that nature that really were not really well observed before and uh, I just noticed people are way more cognizant of that and just people have to remember that they're not just protecting themselves they're protecting their fellow human beings and so it's really important to to pay attention and keep ourselves healthy, keep ourselves strong, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, as well as physically. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, well, thanks for doing your part, uh, you know, sharing, sharing the wisdom that you've accumulated over these decades. Oh, thank you, Malcolm. And thank you and best of luck with what you're doing down your way. I know you've been a huge inspiration to, to people in your part of the world in terms of just giving people the tools to to recognize how they can get a handle on this, how they can, you know, not only just eat well, but 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 enjoy it in ways that they feel that they have a little bit more um, not responsibility, but more uh, tools and empowered how to do it for themselves. And yeah. so I think that's really important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So okay. I thank you for that. Right on. So maybe, maybe just kind of a couple more points before we wrap it up here. Um, yeah. So I had, I had a specific question about mushrooms and, uh, you know, a lot of people more and more are turning to mushrooms, especially in, in times like this, like in addition to just kind of daily general overall health and well-being. Right. You mentioned a few ones, you know, reishi being fantastic, maitake, shiitake. Um, yeah, anything you want to further share with that? And uh, do you see a combination of mushrooms uh, more beneficial uh, in this time? You know, because I know when you start looking at the antiviral properties of mushrooms, some are indicated against, you know, very specific viruses. And I'm thinking about that reference chart that you have right. on the back of uh, yeah. the fungal pharmacy. Um, my sense is, you know, since this is kind of a new virus, we don't really know much about it, you know, like a broad spectrum and, and going for a combination of mushrooms yeah. versus just... Yeah, I think, I think that uh, there are certainly there's lots of combos out there, seven mushrooms or 14 or whatever. And these can be very useful as long as people have identified that all the mushrooms in that blend, actually, uh, they don't react or have an allergic response to. Right. That is, if you don't test individually, you would never know that, right? Right, yeah. The other thing, and the other side, I'm gonna be a little devil's advocate here. Um, if you want to get the advantage of different mushrooms, then have singles and alternate them. Right. So that you don't create a possibility of uh, uh, immune response with regards to allergies, for example, taking reishi every day without a break, yeah, probably yeah. not a good idea, right? right? So switch them up. Yeah. Don't take them all at once in one formula. So maybe, maybe do five days of reishi, take a break, and then do shiitake, and then take turkey tail, and then shaga, and be careful with your shagas. I've mentioned to other people in terms of uh, it is high in oxalic acid, and uh, those prone to kidney stones you know should should not use it as a daily beverage but more as a medicine like it's meant to be right yeah sure. um reishi by the way i just would mention um it is contraindicated uh for um people who are already taking blood thinners right or uh, ace inhibitors so just pay attention like yeah. all mushrooms like all medicines uh 
there can be contraindications with uh, with some people with some drugs. So just yeah. some caution there. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I like that. I like that advice. You know, get a, a selection of the different ones and uh, kind of mm -hmm. cycle through them. I know it's easier to do the combo. Yeah. But uh, but uh, you know, for for those who are not sure, some people react very uh, poorly to something like uh, I've heard reports from from Turkey Tail. Shaga for sure, uh, but uh, by by just picking individuals and whether they're extracts that are capsuled or whether you're doing tinctures, it wouldn't matter as long as they're a good quality and you know what you're getting, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, here's here's a question I always like to ask uh, herbalists because people have different approaches. You know, some people are more the kind of like the mega dose, right? And then some are into kind of like just that micro dose, almost like the, the drop dosing, as, as I've heard Gerald describe it. You subscribe to one side or another, or that's a great question. I mean, with mushrooms in particular, or yeah, mushrooms and, and, and herbs, I guess in general as well. Yeah, I've seen I've seen both work with people. It's kind of interesting. Uh, right. I I've I've seen people respond very favorably to homeopathic, which is about as dilute as you can get. Yeah. Uh, I've also seen people really need and, and respond well to heroic doses of particular herbs, particularly some. Uh, tonic herbs, but also uh, when they really needed them. And yeah. so there's no cut and there's no real easy answer to that. I would say uh, that uh, herbalists who have some clinical experience can kind of determine by looking at the individual, the constitution they have, uh, what phase of, uh, uh, of uh, infection or stage of inflammation is going on in their body at the time and then make those decisions. Right. For example, someone who has a very weak constitution, they may react very poorly to too high a dose of herbs. Right. Right. Yeah. And then for somebody with a really strong constitution, too little will not do a thing. So yeah. I think it's very individual. Yeah, no, totally. And, and the benefit of, of working with a practitioner? Very. Yeah. You can get to see one. Right? <laughs> well, right. A lot of it's happening, you know, like this. It's on it's on Zoom. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well I think I think the social networking is proving its worth in this these times. I think it's uh, extremely valuable for people to connect and form their own community. Yeah. Like yeah. Worldwide. You can have that and I think that's just amazing. Yeah, cool. All right, uh, before we wrap it up, any, any kind of one bit of parting advice you'd like to share or something that you thought, you know, you're coming onto this call that you really wanted to, uh, to get out, you feel it's important for people to know in this, this time? No, I don't think so. I yeah. think, you know, we covered, you know, a few areas here that are important. Uh, my feeling is that people just need to take care of each other. That's what yeah. my message would be. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, thanks for all you do. If you want to check out Robert's work, he's at selfhealdistributing.com. You can find a number of his books. We carry it at Light Cellar, as well as direct through Robert and on Amazon. 54 titles to go through with 55 coming up. So uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Malcolm. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for your time being on. Appreciate You're welcome. Take care, take care of you and the little one. Yeah, that's right. Ah, he's so cute. Really hope you enjoyed that interview. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are receiving notifications of all the videos coming out. And if you want access to the entire video series, something that you can replay, you can share with friends and family, then definitely make sure you take advantage of the offer to get access to all of that. And thank you again for being part of this community and this series called Community Immunity.